Hey, welcome back to the channel. Back to dealing with batteries. A little different scenario here. You are now watching Farming with Duffy Ag. Oh, this is my father's 2020 regular cab. Pretty basic. I was surprised he actually bought a new truck. Um, it's got 1,800 miles on it now. Granted, he's not doing much driving. But yeah, it turns into a farm truck pretty shortly. So they went and got batteries for uh, the feed pusher. And uh, the batteries have just wore down and granted I service the feed pusher and whatnot and it's gotten cold so the feed pusher's uh, three years old now so and all it does is run on batteries so it's time to swap them out oh, don't want to run my father's new truck into the side of the barn time to swap them out and uh, put new ones in so we'll go do that got a little bit of welding to do today that is tight what am i doing here forgetting to have the back up when i'm talking to you guys so yeah we'll get after that kind of wish mine did that Feed pushers tops up already. So just poke your head in here. Batteries go right there. It's a 24 volt system, which means one one of these leads over here goes to the positive on one. The ground on the other goes on the other battery, and then you got that jumper wire that they got sitting over here. So that's how you make 24 volts out of 12 volt batteries. So let's slide them in. This thing needs a little blow off. It's been a while since I had it all opened up so the sides come off and all it does is push feed all day there's actually transponders in the floor so backs out of here it knows the transponder turns heads in and as you see it's not pushed up feed lately and in the floor here there's transponders every uh eight foot and it works off of that initial transponder of how far over to go goes down comes back parks itself so the jaws j-o-z feed feed pusher gia's is the same thing just with a different top on it it gets beat on pretty bad by the cows but looks in that in this environment really don't mean anything since yeah cows just beat on it anyways but alrighty I gotta throw these in and get on with it There it is all hooked up the covers don't go back on it's a little dark in here but as you see you jump across to make two 12 volt batteries into a 24 volt system so that's all good there get this cover put back down we'll see how it likes pushing this that's pretty far out for it but we'll give it a go we still got to sweep up over here so it goes right into the corner. I figured out a lot of things about how these run and how to train them so they push really, really well. It's a trial and error. So we got four of them in right now. I think a f five of them in right now. I think five. Um, and there's a bunch more interest because as you see, cows sort. So what they're actually doing here is they're sorting through trying to find the grain and basically the goodies and you don't want you want a balanced diet so keep pushing feed in um the biggest reason it gets pushed out is because they're sorting as you see and then it gets so far away that they don't, their intakes aren't as high so
it's doing a good job. Let's see when it gets down there. But. So this is on 15 uh, centimeters in, which is like the furthest out push we do. So it can go in 50. The furthest I actually run is 40. Um, and if it hits an obstacle, it stops, retries. If it amps so high that it can't push anymore, it actually bumps itself out and then keeps going. And then when it drops back down, moves itself back in, so. And a lot of people are gonna say, oh, a skid steer, we'll push it up, this and that. The point of robots in this lifestyle and milking cows this way, cows are eating 24 hours a day. Um, and with them eating 24 hours a day, we don't wanna be out here at one o'clock in the morning, two o'clock in the morning, three o'clock in the morning, pushing feed up. I get it on a bigger dairy. If they're milking 24 hours a day, yeah, somebody's always there, somebody's running around. But even our barns that are bigger um, and that have more people in the time, feed pusher drastically makes it better as far as cows getting to the bunk, consuming what they want, and then leaving. As you see, they were all kind of not that aggressive before, and now they're all aggressive that it's pushed in. They're going to eat. They're going to go lay down. When a cow is standing up, eating, milking, standing, doing anything, she's not making milk. It's when they're laying down, when they're really comfortable, chewing their cud, which is basically regurgitating their feed and breaking it down that way. That's how cows eat. That's why they have uh, multiple stomachs. Four stomachs? You should know this stuff. So, but Feed Push is doing a hell of a good job right now. Missing a little bit because it was so far out. We'll push that back in. But what they've been pushing feed up since that was shut down since yesterday um is a old feed pusher that we used to have so we put the feed pusher and we went to the second robot due to we didn't have enough feed bunk space the idea we wanted cows to eat and lay down quick, as quick as possible um and not have to fight for feed bunk space and that's all how the barn was laid out so feed bunk space goes into a big part of making milk in barns that are full full um so they've been pushing up feed with the mini loader and the old snowplow that we pushed up feed with for like seven years. Um, and that actually broke the hinges. And it's a good thing to have that if somebody messes up and they got to push some feed from one end to another, it's a good tool. So the hinges where it actually mounts on broke on one side. So we'll go check that out. We'll get that welded up and get that back so it's good. Forgot to put this back in there. I'll run down and do that. Update on the white truck with the transmission. If you guys have watched previous videos, I'm sitting here and uh, I'm reading through this uh, Spicer six plus one service manual, which is pretty, pretty handy. It's OG and everything, Dana Corp. So I'm sitting here and it says um, front case capacity, 41 pints, uh, rear case is 10 pints. They are separate. So then, and it's got all the air stuff, what to look. So somebody had mentioned maybe the seal and the shifter uh, for the high-low, which, so somebody had asked me too. I better do that while I'm at it. I don't know where I'm at. Give me one second. Here's the shift pattern of a six plus one. So you got reverse, you got high-low and reverse. You got first or low between high and low. And then you got second, which everything after this, you run in high. So you go low, one, high, one, two high, three high, four high, flip up here in a U, uh, five high, and then six is down in the bottom. So, okay. Um, and here's the drawing of it, which has a seal going to the rear case. 
So I'm thinking that seal is junk and it's letting fluid into the back case, um, filling it up, and then it's splashing it out the breather. So if somebody had mentioned that I didn't need a breather in the back, the plug. So I'm going to have to investigate and see if air will go from the back to the front or if everything's just going to the back and staying back there. Um, if I can get by, if the case is that full, I'm going to have to do some more digging on it. So it's always handy. I bought this when I got the truck, so I knew how it would how to drive it. And this actually is coming really handy right now. So I appreciate everybody in the comments um, of what to look at. There's some good ideas. You guys are definitely thinkers. So I'm going to have to hold on to that, bring it home, do some reading tonight. Two pieces of metal. What is Yanko doing out there? He's like, let's go do something cool. Yeah, we still got snow. It's supposed to be warm this weekend. I got to get this off of that, though. That might give me some trouble by myself. I need somebody to give me a hand. But as you see right there, yeah, that's no longer there. So my plan is, and this just hooks up. It used to be a snow plow. We just put this front on it. My plan is just to cut that one out, notch it a little bit, put that one back in, cut two holes in it. Will it work? We'll find out. Got a little aggressive. That's my issue. As you see, all this stuff is bent. That finally broke out. So what I'm thinking, I ended up cutting off just a little bit left because then I can weld to it, make my life easier. Um, and I think I still get enough length. Measure it up. So, like if we put that in at an inch and a half, you need like two inches in. So if I put that at two inches, I should still have enough room where I can punch a hole. I don't need three holes. That was set up prior um, to help with the height because it was a real snowplow on something. But I think that's what I'm gonna do. And then I got plenty I can weld to the back, the front. We'll straighten some things out, we'll grind it. But I got a lot more to weld to as far as durability. And then I'm just gonna punch two holes at the same height. We're gonna put that on, one on each side. So I'm gonna go get my grinder. Got it all done up. 
they do slope out a little bit the previous ones had some bend in it there's enough flexibility in that that it will line up good so as you see you got the holes cut got it mounted all we got to do is weld it and maybe throw some paint on it tip was playing a little funky game with me and I had to stop the music that I do jam out to some music no idea who that guy was who showed up behind me he walked over there and he left no questions whatever bud that's part of what we deal with though because we have people just wander around but switch these tips and see if that gets it it was Binding up from time to time. Alrighty, back to welding. That's much better. Looks pretty good. Got it all welded up. I did end up tapping that in just a little bit um, so that it lined up a little better. But there's plenty of give over there. But look at that. I do enjoy welding when things go like smooth. and It's a lot about the prep work. But... Alrighty, I need somebody to give me a hand putting that back on. I'm thinking about welding on the bottom bottom, but I don't think I need it. There's a lot of weld on there. I only put one hole. You only have to keep one. Yeah. Do you want to do that one first? So if you turn them. Yeah, so you can lock it, yeah? You pull it? Yeah. You want to do that one too? I don't know what they want. I don't know. <laughs> we'll get the it up there and see. Uh, do you want to put that one first? Or do you want to yeah, do this one? Uh, do that one first. Okay. I can lift it. You put it on the clip. Yeah. Ready? Yep. Yeah. That's perfect. Oh, there we go. Perfect. perfect. That's fine. That's good. We want to take one link out of this. No, I think I think it's fine because if you put with, it like well, that, with the when the, when with the skid steer, it doesn't hit the ground. You know what I mean? Or you can't curl it back. Yeah. So what do you think? Take one link out because you can still curl it down so with we'll, either thing. You will take one. I'll just cut one out and go back. I'll move it up one. Yeah. I ended up taking two links out. If it's too much, uh, we'll have to just undo it and go more, but I got sick of driving around and it pretty much smashing into stuff. Well, I guess they're grooming the cross country ski trails. Um, we got all the snow and there's a guy that rents the cross country ski trails. I guess with COVID, he's not allowed to rent uh skis to people but he can still have the still have it open oh, 
Thought I just painted my leg. I'm not gonna be happy. Okay. Dang it. Cross that. There we go. One of these things. There we go. That might be a little better. Got it all finished up. Paint it up looking good. Tighten up the chain some. He's gonna come hook up to it. So all it is with this is just quick connects for those of you who don't know. Just locks in. You got a little whip down there on the bottom, they lock in. So he'll go in, he'll curl up. And then he just locks in and down there in the bottom see right there locks and that holds it so we'll kick this out and then that's good to go people ask me about the mini loader awesome love it 908h fantastic machine actually going to go push some snow with it there you go we'll go check on the feed pusher now that we put new batteries make sure everything's happy it's pushing well there it is doing a hell of a job right there so see it encountered a little too much pressure it's gonna jet itself out some and then it will turn back in which that is a big pile Yeah, watching this thing, it seems like it's going slow, but it does it all day long. There it goes. Handy, definitely handy, so. But that's gonna keep on working. I'm gonna jet on home, get some videos edited up for you guys. Really appreciate everybody watching. Um, all the support, all the comments of pre previous videos. I figured I'd show you guys what I do. Um, so this was the day after work. Um, I worked this morning, came home, did some projects, take you along on it. So if you guys are enjoying this, share this stuff up, tell a friend, subscribe. Really working on getting to 25,000 followers. Right now we're at 24,000 um, subscribers. So appreciate everything. Give the video a thumbs up if you've made it this far. I figure you enjoy it. Um, if not, I'm not really sure why you're still watching. but. Make sure you subscribe. I'll see you guys on the next video. Have a good one.